every conversation with like, how are you feeling since we started out the morning that way, right? And this is our first, again, in-person summit in two years. And we've been all cooped up. And now we're actually here and in person and we get a chance to meet and connect with each other. It's incredible. I'm really excited about the next conversation because it's with a designer that I love. No rush, I don't want to make it feel that way. All right, let me see. Joining Brandis Daniel is Rodney Patterson. I mean, how dope is he, right? Like, just incredible. Thank you, Rodney, for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, and I love this pop of color. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. And I don't know if you guys can see these shoes, <laughs> but they are everything, yeah. everything. Thank you. How have you been? I've been well. How are you feeling? I've been well, thank you. I'm feeling really good. Good, 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 good. Um, I'm trying to see. Can you guys hear, Rodney? Not, not well? All right, so we can get the mic turned up just a bit so that we can hear him. So let's talk about your brand, Okay. Essential. What was the inspiration behind it? And tell us about the brand. Tell the people in the room. Okay, so um, Essential is a headwear brand and um, a little background. Okay. So um, my background is in visual merchandising and styling, and uh, my and some design projects uh, for ready to wear over the past decades. And um, my approach has always been about um, finding new ways to see things that were traditional. Uh, and I've always been excited about unique shape and proportion. So about seven years ago, eight years ago, um, I was watching fashion shows, uh, runway fashion shows. And I wanted great hats. I wanted unique hats. It's like, okay, all winter I wear a coat. Yeah, and I wear yeah. Pants. But I like. I wear coats and, um, you know, but I want a great hat, just like something that would make a statement. So I started, um, I found a hat maker in Soho who um, made hats. Mm -hmm. And I would go in and I would say, okay, I want it to look like this and I want it to be this size and, you know, like talked him through details. And he would make me these hats that uh, were one of a kind, which was exciting. And people would stop me on the street and say, hey, where did you get that hat? I'd love to buy a hat like that. But obviously, having them handmade one by one, I couldn't sell them you know, and make any profit. Uh, so little by little, I learned the process of making hats. I would, have, I would buy hats and then have him remake the hats, different things like that. And uh, they were all really just based on things that I wanted to see in hats that weren't available. And then also the people responding to the hats in a very, very positive way. So that's kind of how Essential came about or what the inspiration was. And how long have you had the Like brand? a miss, something that was missing in the market. Right. Yeah. How long have you had the brand? Uh, the brand is just short of seven years old. Okay. Uh, it started word of mouth and people would come to my living room and try on hats. Um, little, and then I guess five years or two years later, now four, almost five years, I've had a website, essential.com, and um, that is Everybody's you know, going to it on their phones right now. Exactly, right? and then um, and um, I sell mostly through Instagram, not through Instagram, um, like an online Instagram, but basically people see posts that I, you know, post, and I do everything very organically, shoot it. You know, I'll throw a hat on the floor and take a photo of it. Or there are some insp like influencers. See, but you're very organically is probably so dope. Um, well, maybe I'm a little <laughs> bit ahead of the game because yes. I have a styling and visual merchandising background. Right, so, right. so maybe that helps me um, a bit or whatever. And I, I definitely uh, kind of have an eye or a point of view. Um, I was very comfortable in doing this uh, because of my corporate background of working for other retailers and letting them put their companies in my hand with how I presented their product. So, you know, it made me feel like, okay, I can do this, you know, right. so. Yeah. Love exactly. that, love that. What made you want to break away from the, like, ordinary hat silhouette? Uh, I'm not an ordinary person. Um, I'm, I've never, I'm always inspired by seeing things that are unique or different. Mm -hmm. um, I, but, not ridiculous or not like look at me 
for the sake of look at me. I, I like the idea that people, um, well, first off, um, hats are transformative. So if you put on clothing, you know, you look great. But if you put on a hat, it kind of takes you to a whole nother dimension. Yeah. You know, so you have to choose the hat wisely, and you also have to be comfortable with that new dimension mm -hmm. you might be entering in, you know, so, so that's it. But um, I like that. And um, I have a small shop in the East Village, and people come in and, you Where's know. Where's your shop? It's on 2nd Street, uh, 67 East 4th Street, and okay. it's on um, 4th Street between 2nd Avenue and Bowery. Okay. So it's a really great block of other like makers and things like that, small shops and uh, theaters and that sort of thing. Gets a lot of traffic, which is fantastic. But um, I'm able there to see people try on the hats and really see them kind of come alive. And then um, I have this really, really animated salesperson and the shop is his sort of stage, and it all becomes somewhat performance art, you know, whether you like it or not, that's what it becomes. So um, Now we all have to come. Yeah, you do, you do. <laughs> and, you know, his name's Gary. Make sure I'm not there. You want to experience Gary because, you know, I'm going to tell you, you know, hey, you know, this is what the brand is. Try it on or whatever. And Gary's like, oh, my God, you know, you have to try on this, <laughs> and, you know. And if you say it doesn't match anything you own, and he's like, you know, if it doesn't match anything, it matches everything, you know, and it's like, <laughs> right. you know, you know, and then, you know, someone, someone else will try on a hat, he's, oh my God, murder she wrote, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> it's, it's a thing, you know what I mean? I'm, and I'm just kind of like, you know, let me know if I can help you, <laughs> you know, you know, can I get you a size, you right. know, but no, he's, it's a performance, you know. Um, I have a camera, you know, for the shop, and I sometimes look at the camera of the shop, and he's perfecting his outfit in the mirror. You know? <laughs> How about straightening the show, you know? We, we have to all go see Gary now, you must, right? We you have must, to go exactly. See Gary. It's pure entertainment. You don't have to buy anything, but just experience Gary for sure. Well, speaking about buying anything, you okay. do need to buy something. Well, yeah, right? of course, absolutely. So let's talk about, like, why is it so important for people to support black designers in this climate? Uh, so first off, um, I, coming from like a real pure retail background, which was obviously large corporations and probably uh, owned by you know, older white men, um, I always assumed that that was just the way it was. I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit, so I always thought that there was going to be a place for me somewhere in it. But I think I probably also thought it was still going to be managed by persons other than persons of color. You know, like I was going to play a part in it in some way. Um, once I started making the hats, and from my living room, I got an overwhelming response of black people who would just come and say, I'm so excited to be giving my money to another black person. And that was great, and I, you know, I didn't put a lot of stock in it in the beginning because I just thought, okay, you know, that's her thing. But um, it's really, really nice to have a community embrace you, and you know, the hats aren't cheap, so you're not doing it just to, you know, support me. You're buying into something that I'm doing. You are validating what it is that I have to say, and obviously, it must speak to you because, you know you're willing to part with your dollar right. you know, to support it and to do so. So I think it's really, really hugely important you know, that, we, that it becomes more of a part of it. I think it's also hugely important that the larger organizations or masses understand the power of the black dollar and um, support those brands and those, this community in the right way. You know? So that's in media, you know, that's in you know, having the right things. That's, it goes down to when you go to the Dwayne Reed that you have better product in Harlem, you know, or as good in Harlem as you might, you know, in the West Village or whatever, you know. So um, I think that it's really, really important. And I think it's, be it's really important for our people to be smarter about how they spend their dollar because the dollar's a vote. Absolutely. Yeah. How have you sustained yourself? you know, through the last two years, which were really tough mm -hmm. um, for entrepreneurs, and the fact that you not only have this incredible brand, but you've also been able to keep this store open. Um, clearly, you know, at this point, keeping our sanity yeah. <laughs> is, is, is a gift mm -hmm. as well, but what has kind of sustained you? 
Um, at this point in my life, I'm a bit of a daredevil. And I think to some degree, I'm, you know, and I've never said it in the terms of like a bucket list, but I have a bucket list, which is, and the bucket list, the bucket changes. But um, I definitely have a bucket list of things that I want to do. So when I was young and got into the industry, I always said, you know what, you know, I, I create these shops for big retailers, whatever. Someday I want to have my shop, you know. So I designed menswear for a while. I thought it was going to be a menswear shop. It didn't become a menswear shop. Thought it was going to be women's wear. It didn't become a women's wear shop. Somehow it became a hat shop. But having my own shop was something that I wanted to do. And um, I think you just kind of have to just keep pushing forward at whatever it is that you believe in, that you want to do, what you want to achieve. And you know, it's, sometimes it's even OK if it doesn't succeed. But it's important to do it, I think, more so than anything. And um, I never would be a person who didn't try to do whatever it was you know, that I thought I wanted to do. So I think more than anything, you just have to stick to it. And I think that you know, through the, the, la the couple of years, it's been tough. And by the way, this time I'm in now is incredibly tough in the way that you know, I decided I wanted a retail shop. I jumped into it. And it's like, OK, but have you really figured out getting those orders on time to all those online people? You know? mm -hmm. But you know, for me, it's like, oh, you know, three days a week I'll make hats, and then the other four days a week I'll be in the shop. Yeah, that's not how it works at all, you know. But make it happen. Figure it out, you know. And we're all going to have, as independents, we're all going to have challenges. It's how to make, how do you make the best of the challenges, you know, and keep moving. Thank you so much for sharing that, because for all my entrepreneurs in the room, I know that. I see the heads. <laughs> like yeah. that 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 spoke to, that spoke to me personally. And I know that you just being that honest and vulnerable, I know it spoke to so many others in the room. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where do you see the fashion industry heading in terms of sustainability and kind of how do you approach sustainability in your company? Um, so for the hat industry um, particularly. It's in a bit of it's in a moment of challenge. Um, had um, unlike fashion materials, which are constantly evolving, um, the hat industry itself is a bit struggling. Uh, where there used to be, when I started seven years ago, there were probably ten workrooms in New York that still made hats, and independent designers could go and have their hats made. It's now shrunk to maybe two or three. Um, with um, regards to um, animal products, a lot of retailers are now you know, be going animal free because of the cruelty related to the product. And um, so limit, very limited in what materials you can actually get or that retailers want to touch. You know? um, and unfortunately, because the industry is shrinking, there isn't as much development of new materials and new, you know, like, better qualities of felt and better qualities of wool you know, to answer to those challenges. So unfortunately, hat making is probably not the most incredibly sustainable mm -hmm. um, of uh, fashion products. Uh, my version of it is that um, in the past, I'd worked with different manufacturers who created the product. I've since opened my own studio where there's one guy who's been doing hats, making hats 40, 45 years, and he sews, so this is a sewn hat. He sews every hat, he blocks every hat. So in order for me to keep moving forward, I realized I had to create my own vehicle for how the hats were going to continually be made. So that's my future. It's like, okay, I will find something to make a hat out of, and this guy is gonna do it, you know what I mean? So, so that's you know, my part of it. Um, I hope that um, as part of sustainability question, there's heritage. Um, I'd like to leave a legacy of, hey, you don't have to make a conventional hat. And um, to keep pushing, pe hopefully people will continue to push forward to how it is that um, they can sort of move the creative industry or, or the creative part of making hats forward. You know? so, and you know, eventually, I'd like to like, maybe do uh, a program where seasonally I do interns or something like that where I can teach other people 
you know, who would like to learn the business, you know, part of it. So hopefully that can move, you know, the next generation of persons who are interested in making pets Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. Did that I answer the question? You did. That okay. would be incredible. How can we support you, Rodney? <laughs> Got a checkbook? <laughs> 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 no. Um, oh, that's, that's an interesting question. I didn't come prepared to answer that. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. I really don't. I really know. You've got, at, a, at you this got a room. You've got a captive audience right now, right? Don't you guys want to come by the shop? Them? Come by the shop. See Gary. Try on some hats. Don't feel obligated or pressured. You know, but that would that would be great. Follow me on Instagram. How about that? There we go. That's there a great. Oh, yeah, exactly. And what's your what's your Instagram handle? Uh, it is e essential, and it's spelled more phonetically. So it's e s e n s h e l at gmail. I'm sorry, at Instagram, and then my, web, my email is essential at gmail.com. And by the way, because I am a small brand, if you call the phone number on the Instagram page, you're going to get me directly. If you call the website, you, anything you do, you're going to get me directly. So feel free to reach out, you know, if you have any questions or anything I can do, just say hello, you know. I love that. I have to come and visit. Absolutely, the work absolutely. Because um, I have not worn a hat. You said something earlier. You said that wearing a hat takes you into a new dimension. It's transformative. Yeah. It's transformative, mm -hmm. and you're right. But I had never heard it expressed in that way. And you, and you know, you have to be. You know, so my hats aren't like insane. But they definitely are things, and I don't know if any of you in the audience are familiar with what I do, but um, they definitely get attention, you know, and, and in most cases it's positive. Um, but, it, and, and it's interesting also how my mind has changed about hats too over the period in which I was doing it, because I started out doing things that just were fun and exciting and, you know, like out of, just crazy, you know, and got great response, of course, and I get a pretty decent amount of editorial support, and, you know, and the press is good to me, and, you know, TV shows and this sort of thing. So it's great, because I don't have a resource who can go out and get those things at this time, but they come to me, so that's, that's great, and it's, it, I love the fact that I can do something very genuinely that I believe in, and people respond to it in that way. Um, and the same with my Instagram. I don't have a huge following, but the people who follow me do because they like what I'm doing and they want to wear it or, you know, it's, it's, it's just very, very honest, you know, which is, which is really nice. Um, but I was saying, I would do, you know, crazy hats and then I was like, oh my God, I hope she doesn't go down the street wearing this hat, you know, because <laughs> that was my point of view. I wanted her to buy it and I wanted her money and I wanted her to love it. In that way, but I was like, oh, I hope she doesn't go down the street. You know, it's like, it's not a down the street hat, it's a magazine hat. But you know what? For that day, if down the street is her magazine. I've done it before. Do you know I've what I mean? Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, so it's really changed the way that I see a lot of things. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's just like, if they enjoy it, if it gives them joy, you know, do whatever you want with it, you know. I used to do fascinators uh -huh. all okay. the time. Okay. I have not done them in a long time. Okay, I could see that. But I could see be, you in a fascinator. Actually. There would be days uh -huh. I would just have on a regular outfit and uh -huh. walk out with my fascinator on all day long. Exactly. Because that was the mood that I was in. And see, that's fantastic. And I think it was that, a that's, moment. Exactly. But, you know, the old me would be like, oh, my God, where's she going in that fascinator, <laughs> you know? <laughs> In her Reeboks, you know, <laughs> it's just like, you know, please, you know, because I thought it had to be, you know, a thing. Now I'm like, and I'm not doing it to sell, you know, more hats, but, you know, people come to the store like, oh, I don't have the outfit. And it's like a T-shirt and jeans. Like if it lifts you, if it makes you feel good, put it on. There's so many things, you know, daily to bring us down. So whatever it is that makes you happy, go with it, you know, so, and, 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 um, it's, I found that through the joy of watching people, you know, try on the hats. So um, it's definitely changing. And that's my life, you know, like I wear a hat every day. I don't worry about, you know, most of the time I'm going to my studio. I don't work in the shop a whole lot. I do Thursdays, you know, for the most part. But um, because Gary is on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, particularly. So, um, I, but, you know, even going to work, you know, sweatshirt, jeans, and some version of a hat, you know, and 
I don't think about it or whatever. I just, you know, put on a hat. And then there are days, too, I want to wear a baseball cap, by the way, you know, and I don't make many of those. But for the most part, yeah. And people, interacting with people, stop me on the train, oh, my God, I love your hat, you know. And some days I'm, you know, handing out a business card. Most days I don't have a business card, you know, but that's part of the process. Well, we're all so excited about supporting your brand, about coming to the store. One way you guys can support him right now is not only go follow him, but take a picture of his page or take a picture of him and post it in your story so that people can go and follow you. So thank you so much, Rodney, for joining us at our first annual sustainability summit. We're so grateful for you. And thank you for having me because I don't, um, I've, this is new to me, you know, and I am greatly enjoying this experience. Awesome. Well, we have enjoyed you. Okay, thank you. Please give it up for Rodney. Thank you. 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 Thank you